Coming up in this episode, the conclusion to round 10 of the Betfred Super League and results and score lines from the men's and women's Betfred Challenge Cup round 4 and round 5. <laughs> Hello ladies and gentlemen and welcome back to the channel Help Dominance. Anthony here. Please remember to like and subscribe and also click that notification bell if you're enjoying what you're seeing and if you want to continue seeing more. What have we got for you today? Well, it's our episode where we catch up with all the scores and scorers from the weekend. We are going to focus in this episode with the Challenge Cup men's and women's draws as well as catching up with the three final Super League games and we are going to start in Super League with the results. So Thursday saw St. Helens beat Warrington Wolves 28 points to 6 with Earl Lomax, Hapoate, Benison and Ritson scoring the tries for Saints. Benison kicked two out of four conversions while Joey Lussick kicked two conversions, one being a penalty. Matty Russell got his 100th try before in Super League for Warrington and Stefan Ratchford converted right on half time but it was Saints Knights unfortunately for Warrington Wolves who now suffer their second defeated season. Lee Leopards beats Leeds 20 points to 6 on the Friday night after Castleford were beaten 7 points to 12 against Hull KR. Rampaging Hull KR are were behind at six points to nil at half time, thanks to a Miller and McShane um, converted try. Well, Hall and Parcel got the tries in the second half for Hull KR. This after a Jacob Miller drop goal. The Lee result? Well, it was quite a good result for Lee against Leeds, with Edwin Apapi scoring two tries and Kyle O'Donnell scoring as well for the Leopards at the Den. Two conversions and two penalties by Ben Reynolds set Lee for the victory, despite a Leeds late in the first half try from John uh, James Bentley and Reese Martin converting. Wasn't a good day for Leeds, but they'll be back, I'm sure. We move on to Sunday after those Friday results. And the first game that we're looking at is Wigan Warriors versus Wakefield. An 18 0 half time lead for Wigan Warriors, with Marshall, Miski, and Havard going over the try line before Jay Pitts went to over for Wakefield, with Mason Lionel converting. Bevan French scored his 100th try in Super League, this as well with three conversions from Harry Smith to give Wigan the lead. The, uh, and the victory, sorry. <laughs> Hull FC got a much needed win over Huddersfield Giants as Liam Sutcliffe, Chris Asate, as well as three conversions and a penalty from uh, Jake Clifford gave the Black and Whites a win, despite it being an eight all scoreline to, uh, at half time due to the Huddersfield Giants. Uh, Chris McQueen going over the try line. Jake Connor scored a conversion and a penalty. It, in the first half to against his old club before Evan Masters got a try and Essen Masters sorry got a try in the second half for the Giants with Jake Connor converting. Then the Catalan's Dragons are another one that have just slightly slipped out of form as they were beaten in Salford 16 points to 4. Don't get me wrong it was a good first half and the Catalans came back and won the second half 12 points to 2, but Salford came out with the victory in the end. King Vuniyayawa scored the try, and, which was followed up by Joe Burgess, with a penalty and two conversions from Mark Sneed. A Sneed second half penalty wasn't enough, was enough to get uh, Salford over the line, but it was a close wrong thing, as uh, Tom Johnson scored his 11th try this season, Paul Seguer, and Adam Kieran got tries from Catalan. Kieran only converted one of those tries. If he converted the other two, it would have been Catalan's day. It was just an off day for Kieran. But anyway, let's have a look at the full time at uh, the league table after these results. Well, it's Wigan Warriors who top the table with eight wins from their 10 games, 16 points and a better points against difference than Warrington Wolves. And next week they go up against Hull FC 
with five wins under their belts. Warrington might get back on course with Wakefield next week, who got another defeat to their name with no wins this season and prop up the bottom of the table. But Hull KR are another form team with five wins from their last five. Kaplan's Dragons come next despite now losing four games this season. With Sulphur Red Devils closing the point, uh, closing the gap up to the, uh, their French counterparts. St. Helens' win gets them on even points with Catalans and Salford, uh, but have a game less played. Lee Leopards and Leeds Rhinos have five wins from their ten games and five defeats, while Huddersfield are a game behind with four wins from their nine games. Will FC get that win and jump above Castleford Tigers to see themselves in 10th place? We are into the next part of our video now with the Backbridge Challenge Cup. I've missed the round or two of uh, this year's competition, so with round 5 concluding this weekend and the round 6 draw coming up soon, I might as well bring you all the information from round 4 and round 5 in one little segment. Be quick and easy, and the positive of that is we also find out who are going to be competing for the AB Sundex 1895 trophy in the semi finals and then final when the big day at Wembley comes around. So, first of all, let's have a look at round four. Well, round four, see that your Knights went through to do the round five with a 24 points to 22 victory over Sheffield Eagles which was followed up by Batley Bulldogs, who were comprehensive victors over Hunslet ARLFC, 80 points to 6. Dewsbury Rams became the last League 1 team to go into the fifth, uh, to progress, as they won 32 points to 12 over the Witness Vikings in a massive shock. Halifax Panthers moved to round 5 also, with Barrow Raiders their victims 24 points to 18, before Bradford Bulls overcame the Midland Hurricanes 66 points to 18. Now let's get on to round 5, as there were 8 teams vying for 4 positions going into the 6th round of the Challenge Cup. The fifth round has also another benefit for the victors of these games. They get automatic qualification in the 1895 AB Sundex Cup, which is only a two round tournament with the semi finalists facing each other to find out who goes to Wembley for the comp competition. Let's see who gets the victory. Round five followed all. This weekend, with your Knights again becoming victorious, beating Newcastle Thunder 22 points to 18. Halifax Panthers nil Bradford Bulls 20 by 26 points to progress to round six. Batley Bulldogs beat Heathley Cougars 34 points to sw uh, 16. While London Broncos now go ahead to the sixth round of the Challenge Cup, as well as the AB Sun next semi finals, with a 36 points to 16 victory over Dewsbury Rams. Unfortunately for the Rams, their run to the final has now come to an end and bow out after a fantastic effort from rounds one to five. So here's the big reward for these four championship clubs. Semi-final to the AB Sundex 1895 Cup as well as six round ties either against each other or the Super League clubs. The 12 of them that come into the draw. Batley Bulldogs, Halifax Panthers, London Broncos and York Knights all get the privilege to compete on these two fronts. But that means the road to Wembley continues with the round 6 draw, and that is tonight at 6.30pm on the BBC News ch channel in the UK. We'll have the draw later, well, tomorrow, to give you who faces who as the Super League clubs enter the frame. 
This weekend saw the opening round also of the Betfred Challenge Cup in the women's side of the competition as the round one booted off with a couple of welcome additions to this year's competition. We see the Cardiff Demons and London Broncos both joining the women's draw so that they could have a wish and a dream to join us all at Wembley for the Challenge Cup final. And with that, and with some crappy editing by me, I apologise for this, here are the results from those women's games. Saturday opened up the, the round with St. Helens beating London Broncos 76 points to nil. It was a one-way traffic, obviously, but the standout of the game was Leah Burke, who came out with five tries for our St. Helens. So for Red Devils in their first Challenge Cup, this round this year were defeated 22 points to 8 against Featherstone Rovers. Leeds Rhinos women beat Bradford Bulls women 72 points to nil. Before the hour league gap saw Cardiff Demons face Wigan Warriors, with the Demons showing good pot of spots and bad spots unfortunately, uh, eventually succumbing to Wigan Warriors 38 points to 20. Warrington Wolves beat Castleford Tigers, who are still in a bit of a transition period, with Warrington Wolves dominating 72 points to nil also. York Valkyrie, which proved that they're one of the seeded sides, are beating Barrow Raiders 44 points to 4, while Lee Leopards women won against Hull KR 38 points to 16. Huddersfield Giants beat Bolton Raiders 54 points to 4 in Game 1 of Round 1. And with that, Group 2 Week Fixtures, uh, Group Fixtures Week 2 should I say, will be played on the 7th of May, with Salford Red Devils facing Cardiff Demons at Moor Lane, Everston hosting Wigan at Post Office Road, Bradford Bulls vs Huddersfield Giants at Horsfield Stadium, Horseball Stadium even, Alton Raiders, will face Leeds Rhinos at Alton Sports Pavilion. Castleford Tigers will see St. Helens at the Mendehall's Jungle, before Warrington face London Broncos at Victoria Park. Lee Leopards will face Barrow Raiders at Twist Lane, before York Valkyrie face Hull KR at the York Community Stadium. If you are anywhere near the venue on the 7th of May, please make your way down, as it is good to support these women in their quest to get to Wembley. You'll be able to see who are the next stars of the female game. And that's it for another episode, ladies and gentlemen. Thank you so much for watching. Please remember to like, subscribe, and share this video worldwide, as well as clicking on that notification bell for any updates or new videos that may be coming your way in the near future. Tell me what your thoughts are on today's episode in the comment section below, as there's a, quite a few results to go through. And who was your result of the weekend? There is... In the Challenge Cup women's side, you're thinking that it's going the way of the Super League North top teams. They're going to be the ones that progress and everything like that. But who's going to be the runners up? I've still got a feeling that Cardiff could make it in there. And London Broncos could get a win in their group as well. They're another team that's progressing to learn uh, to getting a squad together to improve, getting ready for the Super League South. In the Challenge Cup. We've got an AB Sundex semi-final list of uh, already made up. You'll be able to see that from the winners of the, uh, ch the Challenge Cup matches who went into round six. And we see more fumblings from S Warrington this year and Wakefield. We don't know what's going to happen, but I've enjoyed Super League a lot better than NRL to be fair this year. In some good results, some really good games, and I hope you've enjoyed it too. The topic continues. Anyway, thank you so much for watching. Please remember to share, share, share this video worldwide, and on the episode as you always do historically. By wishing you all the very best, so please stay safe, and I'll see you in the next episode.